Good. I'm really happy that I'm between um, Redus and uh, your talk because mine kind of connects between. Um, we're going to talk about how things went wrong before. Wrongness here. Um, and how the European Union hopes to improve this in the future. So, some of you have already touched upon this. So this is the, the what we like to call the InfoSoc Directive. Um, it was adopted in 2001. Its main goals were to harmonize copyright between member states and to adapt the whole system to a more modern digital age. Well, after 14 years, we pretty much, I guess, we can agree that it failed on both fronts. And why is this so? So, one thing that they failed really badly with was the um, mandatory or non-mandatory exceptions. So the idea was that the whole European system would have a uniform, harmonized uh, system of exceptions, which would make a lot of sense. So when I talk about exceptions and limitations, that what people who are more used to US law would call fair use, etc. Um, and um, what happened, in fact, is that apart from one specific exception, everything else was uh, obligatory. Uh, it was not obligatory, it was um, voluntary. And what happened is that most of the countries just mixed and matched whatever they liked. So in we, instead of more harmonization, we actually ended up with even more diverse systems uh, across Europe. And the other big issue that happened is um, the grandfather clause, um, so lovingly called, which makes the distinction between um, digital and uh, analog. So, it, so, so it different, the laws applies differently whether you, you create in a digital environment or, you know, box standard ink and paper. Um, there's also like small things like DRM and uh, what's this? Does it happen? Ah, whatever. Um, the small things like DRM and just, uh, just last last week we had the tenth anniversary of the Sony rootkit fiasco. Does anybody remember that? That was fun. So <laughs> apparently in 2001 that sounded like a good idea. I hope we've gone past that, but we'll probably show that we haven't. Um, so kudos to the European Union who figured out in 2014 that maybe, just maybe, we should make it, make it everything better again and uh, address the whole issue again. So what happened so far is um, there was one of the hugest um, public uh, surveys by the European Union, what people think, what companies think, etc., about uh, the copyright state and what would they like to have in it. Um, then there was the Red Dead Draft Report, and then after that, the European Parliament made a lot of amendments to it, and we have, at the moment, the final version of the report, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. So this is how it felt like coming from a free culture, free software NGO, uh, when we were talking about uh, copyright reforms. It used to be the same in 2001, when I haven't been with FSF yet, but it's basically you have, you know, your average hero, the public domain, um, being threatened very, uh, very seriously by uh, commercial uh, interest. And you know, there's this small little thing called free culture and free software movement uh, that's trying to save the day. Um, right, but it's not all is bleak. I mean, in the final report, there's some really interesting and good stuff. Uh, for, for starters, there's the they're, they're finally getting rid of the uh, um, grandfather clause and rooting for technotrality, which means that it doesn't matter when you're, uh, whether you're splashing ink on canvas or pushing bits through a series of tubes. That is the internet. Um, the same rules should apply, which makes a lot of sense, and we should have been there <coughs> ages ago. Um, another interesting topic that they proposed is to finally make um, exceptions <coughs> unwaivable by contract, which in practice means that if you're using um, sources um, online, uh, you, you're getting your, your data or your content or uh, pictures online, um, <coughs> you can rely on the law directly and whatever it says in the terms of service 
or the end user license agreement, there you're not able to waive your right uh, for I don't know to to comment, to critique, to create a parody, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to use it for study. Um, a very important part is also the public domain, which uh, in the past few years has been diminishing and diminishing. So they're trying to make it stronger again. And one of the proposals was to have people um, directly assign their work to the public domain, which would be a really cool thing, especially when we're talking about free software, because here in our brand, there's a lot of people who think that if you don't put the license on it, if you don't attach a license to your work, it's automatically public domain, which we, I hope, all know is not true, because if you don't put the license on it, it's full copyright, it's all rights reserved. Um, so at least having that option would, first, uh, first of all, help people understand that and maybe even make it easier to actually do that if they just you know, put a statement. By the way, I put this under the public domain and that would be done. The other interesting thing would also be that um, we would, this would also mean that we can redraft many of the free licenses and make them a lot more easier, like the CC0 or the unlicense could be a lot shorter if that was to happen. Um, but I'd like to point out to the technolo technotrality and uh, unwaivable exceptions, which, is, which has a, could potentially have a really interesting implication on software, because in theory, um, if that were to happen, that means that regardless of the license, whether it's a free license or a proprietary and user license agreement, you could still be able to use the code uh, for the purpose of studying and schoolwork, etc., um, which could be really interesting. I mean, I'm not going to touch upon DRM at the moment because we're running out of time, um, but I will touch upon another aspect of the public domain, which is that in the, in the original draft report, it said that all the information and all the materials that are, draft, that are created by public money should be made uh, for the public, so to be put in the public domain, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. And this is what in FSFE we've been promoting for quite a few years already, that we think that all software that's been created by public money should be given back to the public, aka put under a free software license. Um, this still stays in the current final version, but unfortunately, and here's where we come to the shortcomings and, uh, and issues of the current version of the ref uh, report, um, it falls short of mentioning software ex explicitly. So it just talks about information uh, which was created uh, through public money. Uh, we would really like it to have it ex explicitly mention software because that's where most of the money actually goes into uh, when we're talking about tenders. And uh, there's also some other issues, like the whole overall final report is a little a bit less coherent. There's some some quite concrete issues um, in there as well. Uh, there's um, one, one thing is that while it's again trying to unify exceptions, it's just trying to unify some exceptions and not all of them, which again brings us to the trap we went into in 2001. Um, and uh, here I would like to connect to uh, Julian's talk as well. And one thing that they also failed to do, they hinted at it, but they failed to do is to make the distinction between intellectual property and real property. Um, it started, I mean, the, the clause in there uh, starts as explaining that that's not the same thing. Um, and in FSFE, we've been telling for years and years already that intellectual property is a complete wrong term for what, it, what we're talking about. It's basically just, um, just um, monopoly rights. So, What's next? Um, we have the final report. We have uh, what will happen is by the end of the year, the commission has to come up with a proposal, which will be then discussed internally with the council and, uh, um, and the parliament. Um, which, but what does this mean in practice? I mean, this in practice, this means we're pretty much back to stage one here uh, from from the point of view of NGOs, point of view of free software, etc., the battle just started again. Um, because, I mean, <laughs> the commission is not bound by the report in any way at all. So we just have to explain the same things again, 
to the Commission and uh, again in next round to the Parliament and to the Council of Ministers. So, thank you.